How's it going guys and gals? This is Advance Warrior here and welcome back to another Advance Wars by Web Replay commentary continuing down my Global League run. Alright, so not a whole lot to say um, as of now, but when we get to the seals maybe, but right now we'll just go ahead and uh, talk about the map. The map here is called If It Betrays and the first notable thing, noticeable thing about this map is that there are no HQs but instead two labs that each player already has. Um, for you to win uh, the game by capture, uh, not, not capture limit where you like you know capture and then your opponents eliminated no uh, for you to win by HQ capture uh, you have to uh oh you have to um, capture all four labs um, so that means that for me I am uh, what is this steel galaxy uh, I have to keep these two and then capture this property uh, this laboratory and then capture this lab um, that's back here and it's a uh, kind of isolated um, from either base except for this one but um say like if the if this base cannot go around this way uh it could it will have to go through uh this little back area to maybe protect or maybe break this pipe seam but um i don't i find this pipe seam breaking a little bit of a waste um for both sides here uh, the comm tower is actually pretty close to the lab so but it's also close to your own bases so it's not too hard to um I'm sorry, so it's not too hard to uh, lose your comm tower or get interrupted. Uh, the labs here in the middle are very contested. Um, I'm not entirely sure what is a strong side and what's the weak side on this map. Um, but I do, uh, you will see that there's a lot of fighting up here and a lot of fighting up here. So a lot of the middle is uh, where the fighting is going to be. You know, you have two bases that could maybe reinforce over here. Um, we got a base down here. Actually, this middle base here could um, reinforce either side, I think, just fine. The airport's uh, all the way in the back, so you might maybe expect some uh, late air units. And yeah, just uh, not a whole lot. I know um, the labs are definitely going to be uh, a point of interest for either armies uh, if they're going to try to threaten uh, to win by uh, lab capture. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the COs. Now, the strange thing about this matchup is that this was a tier one game. Um, but looking at my opponent's uh, global league history, uh, they've picked Kindle. They've picked Kindle. Um, basically, all of their global league games, no matter what the uh, no matter what the tier was, and they were performing pretty well um, with this uh, Kindle. Like uh, they had like a lot of like basically all wins. Um, on their profile uh, with the CO. So Kindle uh, has a terrain as a plus 40% attack on all urban terrain, which means properties, bases, ports, airports, labs, HQs. Funny enough, there are labs here and also comm towers. So anything that is capturable, uh, Kindle can gain a 40% uh, attack boost. And like I said earlier, there is some fighting on the uh, top and middle side of the map, and there's a good amount of property, so maybe I could, uh, maybe that could work. Uh, her three-star power, Urban Blight, uh, deals three damage to all enemies on properties, and it increases her uh, terrain bonus to 40, 80 percent, nearly double, basically doubling uh, Kindle's um, attack on cities, and this is really devastating. Um, especially in standard where you can see what your opponent is uh, building unlike in fog because you can use urban blight and you can like drain income on like on like teched up uh, units um, which can really hurt the income of the opponent on the next turn uh, might kill them some tempo and if they repair uh, they only repair up to 9 HP so they'll have to invest a little bit more if they want to get that full 10 HP uh, full 10 HP unit and if there is an unfortunate um, unit that's uh, adjacent to a property then that 80% bonus is just going to deal so much damage. Uh, her 6 star power high society uh, increases her terrain bonus like over triple by like 130% which is very very strong but it also allows all of her units to get plus 3% attack for 
all cities that Kindle owns, just the cities, not the properties. So this power allows Kindle to like have a big push in the late game. I can see this happening in late game, but a lot of people like to just spam Urban Blight. Um, high society at least allows Kindle to gain an attack boost that's off of a property. Uh, it, it feels a bit weird to say Kindle has weaknesses, but uh, I guess uh, what makes more sense is that uh, Kindle has prerequisites to gain power because if she's off of a property she's not really losing anything uh she's just normal like every other co but uh yeah so kindle city specialist really scary capture game scary when there's a lot of properties and scary when uh they have urban blight and you want to build up tech you build teched up units <laughs> all right and for my co i just um it's a tier one so i picked a tier one co i picked hawk hawk's day to day is that he has plus 10 percent on all of his units everywhere so hawk is at least going to get a attack boost um off of properties <laughs> unlike uh, kindle so yeah common sense all of his units will uh hit harder and with a calm tower he gets 20 percent offense which allows him to get those two hit kills on cities which is uh pretty interesting considering that the first uh unit that's going to attack uh a kindle unit on a city uh that kindle unit is going to hit back with 40 percent offense which is pretty scary it's almost like almost like a sonja counter attack <laughs> but um yeah if you're like say there's a tank here Two, two tanks uh, kill this if nothing's occupying that city then a kindle city could come in and like get a first strike with 40 percent offense which is uh definitely something to consider if i'm going to attack uh kindle's units on properties and then like place a unit on that property to avoid a strong counter attack uh hawk's five po five star power is um black wave black wave deals one damage to all enemies and heals 1 HP to all allied units. So this is a very minimal momentum shift. Obviously it's going to change, uh, so obviously it's going to change the units um, values, the army values um, by like 10% and depending if Hawk uh, heals um, damage units then it can bring up, bring his units up to uh, to 10%. Uh, assuming that all of his units are damaged which probably could happen because of urban blight <laughs> um his nine star power uh his nine star super uh black storm deals two damage to all enemies and heals uh two hp to all of his allies now this is usually the more preferred um the more preferred power for hawk to use the problem is is that um it is very very slow um it's like I believe tied with Eagle with nine stars and um, the, the most expensive ones are 10 stars which is Von Bolt's uh, Ex Machina and Sturm's Meteor Strike 2. So uh, Hawk is on the slow end when it comes to power charge but it is a very devastating power and he has a, a very nice attack boost, a no defense boost which is um, a little unfortunate because um, defense is the better stat but uh hawk's uh, attack boost and his powers i th are what i strongly believe to be enough to carry him into tier one and it's going to be interesting um how this match goes if hawk is going to face kindle which is a tier three um but they have proven that they are uh, pretty good with kindle all right so that's enough talking let's get right into it so um yeah, just simple infantry and i have a free infantry obviously just gonna go straight for that third base to help out with my unit count and i have eh, no not i don't have i'm a little con i'm a little confused because they took my army they took black hole but kindle is black hole as well which is fair so i just went with a with a right facing uh with a right facing army um, black hole usually face right, but uh, it's a nice little feature to flip the uh, to flip the units in uh, the proper direction. It, it just feels nice, and instead of going for this capture chain here, my opponent is immediately going for these two properties. So now trying to go for my comm tower, they could possibly interrupt it, but um, that probably would be suicide uh, for that infantry. 
So this surprised me just a little bit, but um, I could reinforce this area very, very easily. So could my opponent, but um, actually I end up doing the same thing. Um, yeah, it's not too hard for uh, either base to reinforce this middle. Like I said, there will be a lot of fighting uh, amongst these, these properties here. And I kind of go back just one just to make my opponent like try to figure out if I'm going for this top property or if I'm going for this bottom property. Just a nice little uh, a little bit of trickery if you want to call it that. So my opponents are my opponents moving their infantry uh, forward. I just stick with the uh, nice capture capture chain and there's a nice little capture chain down here. You go like one, two, three. It's uh it's nice. And instead of going for the center, because my opponent can actually cover uh, these properties... Wait, no. Instead of going for the top here, where my opponent can, cap can protect the properties, I just went down here for the, uh, for the safe capture. I don't want to be losing infantry so soon. And I build the tank. Um, I felt like that this top side was uh, my strong side. And this tank was in range to actually sit on the property, so... Um, Let's see if my opponent will be uh, more or less reluctant to perhaps go for a capture. If they built a vehicle, it wouldn't cover that infantry though. So yeah, the tank to uh, threaten the properties and the uh, unit backs away. Um, I kind of would have maybe liked to see my opponent um, put... Where they put that? I'd like to maybe see my opponent put the infantry here so it can go for either. It is still out of range of the tank, but it's going to... If I try to block one, then my opponent can go for the other. Minor, just a minor thing. You know, obviously in standard you can uh, see everything. So yeah, um, my opponent does get this property, but um, it may or may not be some time until I could like actually capture this. And now they finally start this little back chain here and they build a tank um, in their middle base. Not exactly uh, mirrored to mine. Alright, so I have my infantry here um, in hopes to cover this angle if this infantry does go for the interrupt. And I have an infantry that could cover this bottom angle here. So my opponent goes for the... Uh... No, not my opponent. So I go for this little back capture here and I put a tank on the city um, that my opponent could reach. Like I said, if it was back here, my opponent could maybe start capturing this property and maybe they could bring their tank up here and I would not want to first strike that or attack that infantry because it would just come off tank comes in with urban with not urban blight with their day to day and hits me for 40 percent with 40 percent um 50 percent if they capture the comp tower <laughs> so they go for the back city here they bring the tank where my um where my tank is not at and they capture the comp tower and they go for the interrupt here which is i really don't agree with this it's um it's just sending an inventory off to die i i definitely see why they would want to interrupt a comm tower capture but in return they're just throwing away an infantry because there's no backup and i'm able to get this in just three turns but yeah this infantry is 100 dead and i and i moved my uh, infantry up here because i felt like my opponent was getting a little bit close to my uh to my lab here and that would have meant that I would have had to protect this one lab, which is fairly exposed. But my recon's in range to um, to kill the infantry, and this tank, because of these forest tiles, cannot reach uh, my recon. So that was uh, wonderful. I have my um, I, I move my infantry here. It could go for both of these, but I'm very likely to get this because my infant my opponent has a prop. Infantry to capture this property. I cannot speak tonight. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just uh, moving forward, threatening properties. Uh, I build a tank on the bottom side here um, because there's nothing really protecting these units if this tank ever gets closer. And I just have um, the tank just sitting right here. Like, again. I think they moved the infantry um, away and then moved another one up. I would have liked to see just like, you know, this. Just leave it on this spot. I would have liked to see that. So my opponent gets their comm tower first. 
which doesn't hurt too much because uh, I didn't face any combat yet. And now they have their tank on a property. This is why Kindle is very scary. This is why Kindle needs to be aggressive because th this it, it has 30 defense and 50 offense. You don't want to first strike that. It's like finding Kambe on the road. It looks like they just finished their uh, they waited their units because of like maybe an OCD thing. I don't know. My opponent cannot interrupt this capture, so I get away with this. And I'm also very close to my opponent's um, to my opponent's lab. Um, but they have an infantry capturing here. It could maybe start coming down if I do go for that, though. All right, so my infantry are moving up, and I protect my recon. Yeah, like I've either like walled off a lot of uh, a lot of places, and I have my tank down here. Um, it covers all of my units, so whatever my opponent would maybe want to um, first strike or attack, I am there for the counterattack and the punish. We've already seen one infantry loss from my opponent. Uh, right now, we're my opponent's like a bit ahead on income. I'll be able to get it back because I, um, I, I'm go I captured this, nothing can interrupt it, and I also blocked off um, uh, this capturing infantry with my tank and other infantry. Alright, so uh, another tank on the bottom side. They have three tanks on the bottom side, man. So uh, yeah. Um, Although I'm not Kindle, I'm still just as threatening because cities are very, uh, very strong terrain. Um, I don't know if I'm... Yeah, might have been a little aggressive. I could have maybe put the tank here. And no, actually, my opponent um, could interrupt this capture. I kind of thought this infantry would like maybe like cover one of two sides. But it it has to be it has to be three sides where I have to um, cover that uh, infantry there. So maybe a minor mistake from me. But I have a lot of tanks on on this top side here. My opponent has like three tanks on the bottom side. Excuse me. Sorry. Um. And oh, I also have an artillery because I notice I'm kind of like walling up down here. Um. I intend to make this my strong side. And my artillery um, is on my more defensive side. Um, it's not the best idea to have artillery on your weak side because of um, beca because um, they're harder to use defensively. Uh, you can use them offensively, and they also have like great unit coverage. But uh, if you're doing unit coverage on defensively, then your opponent might have a more overwhelming force to push through. But uh, I kind of considered that like, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, walling off, walling up on the bottom side. I kind of felt that an artillery was, um, was possibly an okay, an okay move. And yeah, you just see how, um, how scary Kindle's units are. And they're moving in. They have two tanks down here, I only got one tank. And yeah, my recon's down here, probably gonna scare away these units down here <laughs> but my opponent has another tank and a mech um, I can maybe see why because um, mechs can like move through these mountains here but they will still be exposed to first strikes um, on the mountains however so I don't agree too much with this uh, they have another tank up here which is very which is completely fine so I still try to go for the capture and and I go for the block um, yeah, wait. Yeah, I, I might have exposed that tank to like maybe two tanks, so that was probably a bad move by me. Maybe he should have, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. Uh, they could interrupt this capture um, down uh, if I left the tank here, but since it has to go through a forest, like one, two, three, four, five, six. So I block off the plane, and they'll have to go through a forest to interrupt the capture with a tank. But I should have probably realized that my opponent would never do that with other tanks around. <laughs> Alright, so I'm kind of threatening uh, this, this lab down here. The only thing I could protect it is this infantry. 
and this tank if it decides to move back. And I have a medium tank here, uh, just to assert my, uh, assert control over this top side here. Because, uh, my opponent has, uh, this property. Mirrored to that is this property, and I don't have it. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, kind of trying to build tempo up here, and, like, hopefully I regain, not regain, but gain this property and have it even like my opponent here. And I like what he did with this uh, artillery here, uh, nice little infantry wall. And uh, if my opponent decides to attack any of them, they will uh, they will be in range of this artillery. And my, my opponent cannot punch through this single uh, infantry here. So that's why I went with the artillery. I noticed I was walling up and I thought an artillery was a um, was a fantastic opportunity but um oh wait actually my opponent could have interrupted uh the capture if they killed this tank and sent this infantry down here so uh yeah i left a lot of units ex exposed i will admit and they go for the first strike here which is pretty crazy to me um it, it, it turns out to be even which is not not good and it's in range of this medium tank here would would have to bait me into uh wait one two three four five would have to bait me to sit on the city but i think it might be worth it to kill off that uh to kill off that tank and yeah my opponent gets um good attacks off the top and they build a um a rocket here now if they build two infantry they'll be left with a thousand and they could have maybe built a medium tank so i thought this rocket build was a little bit strange however let's look at the range one two three four five it attacks three four five one two three four five so it won't cover this city but it will cover this city if it sits on this city and that'll be a very scary rocket so um I, it's i can sort of see how this uh rocket would be used defensively it's a lot of choky terrain to uh defend this rocket from uh from direct vehicles so maybe that's why these airports are like all the way back here there's a good amount of um, choky terrain on this map here. Uh, I heard Javier uh, is definitely considered on this map. I can definitely um, see that. And my opponent goes for a um, goes for infantry down here, away from my artillery, but in front of my tank. But um, it's kind of in reinforcement range of this base, but I don't have a vehicle out of this base just yet. And yeah, as you can see, my opponent stays away from uh, range of my infantry, but still in range to like interrupt any possible captures um, on their lab. Which I don't think I'm going for, I think I'm just, you know, scaring my opponent. Kind of like why I had an infantry uh, up here. Infantry um, is just staying on the top. A little stalemate going on here, like, like holding the bridge. My opponent's just keeping an eye on that lab. <laughs> So I finally do get this property. Now we are even. Oh wow, seventeen thousand for each. That's a. Uh, I don't know why that feels kind of low. So I just get um, first strikes on both of these tanks, which felt really good. And I go for a repair here, which was a bit um, dumb of me. I should have definitely considered that my opponent could get urban blight, or maybe I just felt it was worth it to um, stop this from capturing that, but. I have so many units in the area, I probably should have just um, left my tank um, should have left my tank to sit somewhere else away from the city. Uh, I couldn't join because I needed these to attack first and I had to move this first um, so the others could attack. And as you can see, you know I have more I have more value, more HP than my opponent's tanks. And I have a medium tank on the way, so my top side is looking kind of strong. And I just, you know, start to kind of wall up again. But I have, uh, oh man, uh, this was bad. Maybe I just kind of felt it was worth it though, because it's actually protecting my um, my tank. I'm gonna get nine HP from it anyways. But uh, yeah, that was. Um, I think I might. I think I noticed it, and I was willing to take the the risk for it. And yeah, I just um, kind of wall up and I, I put this uh, infantry here um, because my opponent could definitely um, try to capture it. If I have this infantry here, 
my opponent would need to invest like maybe a tank to pull back and attack this and then they can start capturing and they'll be capturing with 80% attack power <laughs> so I build a uh, two tanks um, down here because I noticed I'm gonna need uh, a lot of help and looks like my opponent is definitely gonna pop the urban blight let's see what he hits here he hits uh, tank medium tank uh, inventory two tanks and artillery and this um, sacrificial infantry I want to see the so I'm at 68,700 let's see what it brings me down to ooh 55,000 so I was like um, five plus eight, yeah, almost nearly like over 13,000 in damage value and it just continues on because like they killed the recon and that's um, now 17,000 but uh, imagine me playing as Hawk and I have uh, <laughs> Imagine me playing as Hawk and I have global damage and I continue to add up attacking. That's a nice, that's a kind of a nice thing I like about um, global damage. Sneaks his tank around. Probably should have attacked with this tank first. It's kind of what I like about global damage. Oh yeah, you see? Uh, this thing survives. What I like about global damage is that it does the damage for you and then you can have, um, and then you can have your units attack and it just adds up. How far could this rocket move? Um, I don't know that far because they have tires and f like four or five movement which means that they suck moving over um, natural terrain but leaving it here uh, for unfortunately doesn't protect these tanks from this medium tank however there's a force here so that's why I felt the rocket was a strange pick probably would have liked to see a medium tank which they definitely could have afforded that turn I will say Black Wave is a bit attempting, a bit tempting, but uh, yeah, my opponent decides to stay and tries to attack, but they might have overstayed their welcome here because I proceed to kill this tank from my reinforcing um, base, and then I put an infantry here. I then put an infantry there. It doesn't update, but this tank is stuck. I then start to capture this property and I move an infantry here, an infantry there, and an infantry here. My my opponent's tanks overstayed their welcome and they um, they are trapped. It, I, I'm kind of getting like flashbacks from uh, from that Discord Cup game that I have that I uploaded last week. Uh, yeah, this is me learning my lessons and capitalizing on my opponent's mistake. And here's the thing. They can kill these infantry. It's sad, but they can kill the infantry. But that doesn't mean they're going anywhere because they used up their turn. And this artillery... Ah, oh man. I am glad that I... I am proud of this artillery. And I just do, like, extra protection because then eh, why not and this infantry can't help it's, it's way too damaged to even try to f try to put a dent in any of these units so I get a first strike here um, stopping this infantry and then I go for the medium tank uh, up here and I managed to get that kill uh, the order of attack was definitely backwards for my opponent here and they lost uh, a tank in that for that I might lose this tank to probably infantry though which is okay, because um, I did do the damage. Now I've got the battle copter, infantry, and infantry. Um, I have the battle copter because my opponent... Uh, I mean, they will probably build an anti-air when they see the copter, but the copter is like the best unit to like go through heavy terrain and maybe strike the rocket. And with plus 20% offense, that copter will be very nice. So my opponent... Um, trying to get first strikes trying to get uh, kills this mech is slowly coming in and this rocket yeah the rocket over here uh it i can't sit on those cities which is uh scary my opponent's going for i was about to call this weird but they definitely um should be able to kill off uh, my units here Ooh, ah man that's so unfortunate wait unless that 3 hp infantry 
<laughs> Dang. Man, that is so unfortunate for my opponent here. And and here they do something down here which I do not agree with. They attack and deal two damage to my tank, but in the, in process losing their own tank. Um, I I am kind of on the side of leaving this tank to like maybe damage infantry, so my capture game would be worse. Uh, as well as it's still being there, it's definitely going to be an annoying presence. Um, but it, in this instant, instance, my opponent's just kind of doing my work for me. All I gotta do is just use this artillery and shoot this tank that's on a road, and my infantry can just do the job. Now I have this tank that can like freely do whatever it pleases. Maybe not first strike this, but yeah, see, you know, just damage the infantry, and um, you can't kill them. Although I am Hawk. And it's not as effective as Andy's hyper upgrade, but having all of these numbers on my screen and I'm getting there to my power is so satisfying. So yeah, now, I, now my opponent finally builds a medium tank. I have a tank trapped here. Probably gonna repair and then maybe kill this tank. But uh, yeah, my opponent's in... Um, wait, did I just see a suicide here? Oh yeah, it looks like a looks like a suicide down here. Ooh, that's a that sucks to see. Uh, puts me uh, ahead in um, in unit count, but not unit value. We are even on income though. I am threatening this property. My opponent loses another tank, and yeah, I should be able to kill off that tank with the uh, Hawks empowered units. Man, I threatened to capture both the property and the. Uh, and the lab here. My opponent can definitely uh, interrupt them. Probably might have Urban Blight, but um, this is uh, something I'm forcing my opponent to do. Yeah, I kind of like doing this, making my opponent um, not want to use these units to attack into other things. And I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe this tank uh, can just like loop around and maybe attack. They don't have a lot of units down here to trap. So another thing that I'm noticing here is that my opponent has a lot more forces up on up on the top, and my opponent and I have a lot more forces down here on the bottom. It's maybe this bottom side for is strong side for player two. This top side is strong side for player one. There is a base um, like in the middle on the top side for player one. Vice versa for player two, and this base can really no. This base, these two middle bases over here, can really go in either direction. So, um, with this uh, base that's you know kind of out in the open, uh, it's kind of interesting to see um, how most of my units ended up down here, and most of my opponent's units ended up up here. So it's just like this bottom side became my strong side. This top side became my opponent's strong side. And uh, I shield my artillery and I get off the lab um, because one, my opponent can't reach the lab and start capturing. If they did, they would. Um, um, if they if they did, then that would give me a little bit of trouble. I could still interrupt it though. Um, just keeping it back here just puts it adjacent. Um, and if my opponent did that, I would get a really nice first strike on a um, infantry on a bridge. And I have a property. I think I saved up a bit of money because I'm kind of expecting an urban blight. No? All right. So yeah, I lose some units in the process. But my opponent is um, threatening properties down here. And what do they have? Rocket. Um, excuse me. They have rockets, um, medium tank, yeah. My opponent's definitely strong on the top. And they're threatening three properties. Two pro two cities and a lab. Well, not this one. It's at 13 points. These two, however, yeah. It's, um, it's the property betrayal. <laughs> but uh, my opponent's anti-air isn't close enough. I think they built it a turn after I built my copter, so that kind of hurt them. I'm able to interrupt that capture. I think I stop it. Or maybe I don't, no. Uh, I put an artillery here. It's out of range of the rocket, but it's still in range to protect that property. And they can't go around these infantry, or the battlecopter, or the pipe seam. 
So yeah, I do capture the lab. Uh, unfortunately, I can't capture anything down there. And I'm probably going to get this property. My opponent will get this one, and then I'll get this one. It's kind of funny how it, uh, how it mirrored a little bit like that. And if my opponent wanted to try anything, artillery here. And two tanks down there. This bottom side, definitely my strong side. Nice how I was able to do a little bit of work with a medium tank up here. And now it's uh, shifting down here to bolster my strong side down here. And yeah, I'm just doing stupid fake threats. And I think I... I think, I think I was expecting an urban blight, but I definitely wanted a second copter. So my opponent moves back, blocks off the bridge, and like gets a kill on the infantry. My opponent uh, gets the strike here, another strike up there. Um, Anti-air moves up to protect all the units. Infantry moving down the heel. Medium tank just staying close to the rocket. And my opponent just uh, moves in, out of range of uh, of the artillery, but um, not in range with the anti-air, so this is definitely punishable. My opponent builds a second rocket on the bottom side, and ooh, that is... Now this is where it starts to make sense as to why uh, indirects on your weak side um, is not optimal it's um it can't take an it can't move and do an action at the same time uh so the fact that you have to be preset on your opponent's strong side is a bit terrifying but uh i am also a bit terrified of this as well but um it's not th right now holding off not not really holding off anything i'm currently capturing but i do capture this and i was behind two income um, at my by the end of my opponent's turn, but by the start of my turn, I immediately evened it out. And I think I was willing to take this hit here. Um, yeah, I th yeah, I'm just um, building up units for the Black Storm. <laughs> Black Storm almost snuck up on me. And look at all these infantry. You thought they were all dead and damaged. They just healed back up, and I just sapped some. Uh, and I just sapped some HP right here. My opponent is not able to uh, to hold to hold off all these infantry that just healed. And I get this. Oh yeah, I did. I think I move planner this turn. I came in range and broke up whatever coverage they had. And then I had the tank that could just swoop in and hit this H eight HP rocket um, and deal five damage to it. So now this rocket is not as scary anymore. Fortunately, this tank gets to live, but the big investment from my opponent to not build a direct unit and build an indirect. If this was a medium tank, I'm not attacking into this. I wouldn't I wouldn't have done this. Like like this looks scary because, you know, the rocket uh, can attack this medium tank, but uh, I just move in and just heavily damage the rocket, take no uh, counterattack problems. If it was a medium tank, this medium, my opponent can use Urban Blight and just like attack the uh, the tank that just took three damage here, and might be able to push through. Have a lot of artillery and infantry though. And yeah, if my opponent ever wanted to do anything, I just um, do anything up here. I just blocked off the road here. Nothing to um, nothing to threat nothing to threaten this infantry like this infantry can. And I have the artillery sort of base locking the. Uh, Base locking my opponent here. It threatens the rocket. It might take some infantry uh, direct hits, but I have so many other units that are just surrounding it. And boom, the I'm just so amazed by Hawks, uh, by Hawks Black Storm. Just little. Th there are so many little things that happen when you use a Black Storm that I feel like it just accumulates together and makes it all worth it. Like um, like. This is just a list of things that goes on um, when I think of a black storm. Um, obviously, uh, HP is strength and HP is defense. Um, if you have higher, wait, yeah, HP is strength and HP is also defense. If you have higher HP, obviously you're going to be dishing out more damage. And if you have lower HP, the terrain that you are on 
it is only a percentage of what your HP is. So to get the full value of terrain stars, you need a full HP. If you have 5 HP, then you're getting half of the value of the terrain stars. And plus Hawk's getting 30% offense um, and 10% defense. 30% offense into 8 HP units, which is... Um, which some people might not say that is worth it for... Um, some people might not say. Some people might say it's not worth it um, for Hawk's uh, power to be this expensive, like like. But that is so nice. But like I said, I just feel like there's just so many small things that accumulate together, and that like you know starts to add up, and it kind of makes sense to me why Hawk's um, powers are so expensive. And I built a Neo tank here. I know there's an Urban Blight coming, but hey. I felt like I'm in a really, really good position here. Um, by the start of my opponent's turn, who's player 1, 29 units, 95,000 value, versus 18 units to 49,000 value. We are tied on income, so income's not a factor. Uh, let's look at unit count. Unit count, I'm ahead by 11. And unit value, I am ahead by nearly 45,000. Nearly. But they pop Urban Blight, so that 95,000 goes down to an 82,000. Still much higher than 49,000 for my opponent here. And they try to get the first strike from the property. Just puts us down even. Rocket has to retreat. And my opponent just goes for um, hits on... Um, hits on my artillery, but... It's not a lot of damage done. Don't know why my opponent put this mech here. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Anti-air moves in, um, can't punish this copter because it was not protecting the tank that moved in, and they're threatening to capture that property. Rocket goes for an infantry hit because uh, it had the highest HP. Not attacking from a city though, which would have been kind of satisfying to see. Is build infantry and copter. <laughs> Notice I don't have an anti-air because my opponent didn't build copters. They built like two rockets this game. And yeah, my opponent... Uh, definitely on the uh, on the defensive back here but um, let's see what I do so I go for the uh, the heavy rocket hit here I think that's what this copter was originally uh, built for was to solely target this rocket now this rocket is like barely a threat and um, yeah I have uh, this neo tank attacking this uh, medium tank and this rocket is not protecting that medium tank well it can but at what damage. That medium tank is dead too. This inventory, this mech here, kind of just suicided itself here. Um, but yeah, I'm like walling up just a little bit. And then I got the artillery right here. Yeah, my opponent can go ahead and stay to kill this copter. But um, that artillery is going to get um, its own value by just killing an anti-air that's like 2,000 more income than the, than the artillery. Threatening this capture down here. And I'm not killing units, but mainly damaging them to be nearly useless. And I joined Cap here, so now I have two infantry that would um, start protecting, start threatening to capture the lab. This battlecopter will have to move down if it wants to do that. Or maybe this rocket will have to loop around. But um, that means that rocket will not be attacking all these units here. I still build the anti air though. In response to my opponent's copter, built it from the middle base because um, I want an infantry here. Um, also, also my uh, my blob of units is kind of like in in between, so maybe it was fine. And I just wanted to, s to swarm infantry on my bottom side here. And day 16 for my opponent, they have resigned. A 10 um, 10 unit deficit and about um 54,000 uh that is uh about not exactly but about 54,000 um unit army value behind all right so um yeah um my opponent picked a tier 3 CO in a tier 1 game i understand i understand their confidence in using kindle but um, as you saw, my Black Storm and my overall uh, unit damage was um, definitely enough to uh, 
to completely stomp Kindle. Um, and you saw a few times where my opponent was trying to get some chip damage in. Um, they're not on city, so they can't get that uh, that bonus. Like I said, for Kindle's units, it's not a weakness. For, yeah, like I said, for Kindle's units, it's not a weakness that they're not attacking from a property. It's just that they're missing out on that um, 40%. They're still average like every other CO. Uh, like I said, if they're not attacking from a property. From a property, they're amazing. And those are the important tiles that um, people need to fight for in Advance Wars. However, it's just... Um, yeah. It's just a lot of, uh, lot of chances to miss out on, um, on an Urban Blight attack from a city. Or like a day-to-day -day attack from a city. The Urban Blight is the most effective um, thing about Kindle, though. Like, almost a guarantee uh, to get some value if your opponent has teched up units on properties. Alright, so let's see here. I built 44 out of um, 40 units from my opponents. Um, oh, yeah, I'm player one, so I think it would make sense if I did this. Yeah, it make, that, yeah, that makes a bit more sense. Um, I have uh, 15 deaths, but I have 20 kills. Uh, we were fairly even on income the whole time. Um, yeah, until like the few property swaps that you saw. And... Deaths? No, I didn't kill rockets. I just dealt damage to rockets. Uh, which is pretty insane. And yeah, you know, all that damage just like, you know, really hurts the, uh, the army value here. So, um... Yeah, I don't really think I had uh, much to say. I think I should have realize earlier that my strong side would be this bottom side here um and plus this base can maybe reinforce down here and like make this a strong side but i think these labs were also swapped as well uh which is kind of funny so now i kind of see why this map is called if it betrays because there was definitely a lot of property swapping going on <laughs> like my opponent was going to get away with this capture but my opponent cannot stop this capture here and if they tried anything, if they had anything, indirect units, artillery would have covered these tanks. But, um, yeah, I would, I would say, um, a lesson for this game. If you are playing, if you are playing Global League, know your CO tiers. And, like, actually take advantage of your CO tiers. Black Storm, you saw how devastating that was. And my overall 20% offense... Uh, got in a lot more chip damage than Kindle. All right, guys and gals. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's a that's an old school face cam. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, watching this video. I enjoy doing these uh, these we're showing my global league games here. Always open to feedback. Always open to learn something new. Um, so if you definitely have something to say about this matchup or how I played or how my opponent played, and how I should have played around it, definitely definitely leave that in the comment below. Uh, I always want to improve, so that is, um, YouTube is a great opportunity for me to learn, learn some things from more experienced players. And yeah, that's not a whole lot to say. Um, I hope you guys appreciate the Wednesday uploads. I'm going to keep up with that uh, alongside my weekend uploads. Because uh, I have so many games um, to like pump out. I definitely want them to come out uh, as soon as they could without being too stale. Because this game definitely was a while ago. So I'm hoping that a double upload will uh, keep keep you all up to date about my games. Alright, I am Advanced Warrior and you all have my warmest regards. Please take care.